Welcome to Caseback Watches. My name is Tim and in this episode I have two very special watches for you. The first one sent in by Cormac Hanley from France. He's a former photographer and now he makes his own custom made by hand dials and he combines them with 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 Vostok cases and now look at this. He sent me that watch. My own personal Vostok diver. Can you believe this? And I'd love to review this watch in this video. And the second watch comes from, also a Russian watch, comes from Julian Kampmann, polio24.de. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the first Russian military wristwatch in form of a reissue, of course. Very interesting. Look at this pocket watch case and on position two is the crown here, bun strap and so very interesting ensemble and I will show you everything in the light box as well. But first let's begin with, um, let's begin with Cormac. This is a crazy story. I mean it's a sad story in a way because Cormac was in business as a photographer in France and uh, excuse me this microphone is a bit weird right now and he was good in business but then with 47 he suffered a stroke and a really severe stroke excuse me my notes this is one of those days so suffered a stroke and now believe it or not now he tries to make his way back into life with wristwatches with wristwatches and he wrote me um I had my stroke at 47 and went back to zero, 47-0. This is now the name of his brand. On, under this label he, he presents his modding on Instagram. Check out his Instagram page, please. And he writes, the stroke affected half my brain and half my body. I literally became an asymmetric being. But I've always found perfection dull and boring, and especially in my photography. Wabi Zabi, the beauty of things is in the imperfection, in the asymmetry of things. The name is on the edge of the dial because for now I'm not a watch brand, I'm just a guy who likes to try to improve on things the way I see it through my own aesthetic. So I'm a watch model for now, a watch model who sent me this, this wonderful watch. And normally you're not so critical with, um, with gifts, it's seen as highly impolite. But I will give this watch a full review and I will um, show you the weak spots as well because Cormac is very critical with his own work. If something goes wrong he presents on Instagram and then he says one week work and now this, look at this. So he's very honest with that and I think this is a project in the beginning and he needs improvements, he needs backup, he needs help and everything. And so I want to point out the strength of this piece and the points which have to be improved. And so let's do it. Okay, here we are with the Vostok with the custom made dial. Look at this. And I will not bother you with exact measurements of the watch or specifications regarding the movement and everything. I think we've seen those reviews of Vostok watches. They're not unknown. Here I really want to focus on the dial. This dial in fact is made from a, from a, from a metal plate basically with a CNC machine. And so let's discuss the elements here, the design elements. You see here the logo, the 47-0 trademark, if you will, so on the edge of this dial, not in the center, because um, you've heard Comac, he's not a watch company in, in, in that form. Here you see Tim and 20K for 20,000 subscribers, so you can see yourself <laughs> here on that dial. And you have sub-dials here on position 10. And the dial's composed with at first glance, simple elements, so you see um, lines and dots only. But what caught my attention first was that it's um, it's so equilibrated and it's in a kind spacey. I had to think about NASA operations and yeah, space travel when I saw this dial. And the dial has a, a, a crazy texture, as you can see. See that? This brownish texture here, which um, looks different under every different angle, actually. See that? Very crazy. And so overall, um, if you ask me, the design is abs job done. Job done, basically. You don't have to improve this anymore, Cormac. <laughs> At least, um, I think this is this is a really good looking layout of a dial. A really good looking layout of a dial. The shapes are there, the proportions are there. The color play is there, this brown together with the gold, everything is in place. 
So really, you can't stop um, searching for another design, you found it. At least for this type of watch. I mean, of course, not everybody wants Tim 20K there. <laughs> this is a unique piece. But if you have there another element for, for another client, really, then this would be, yeah, this could really, this really could work. But my question now is, this dial I can wear with pride and joy because it's so personal, Cormac made it only for me and I'm damn proud of it. But you see, you may see that the engravings are still imperfect. See that? You, you see there is still this scratchiness in it. And my question now is this, is this too rough for a real market? Is this too rough? I mean, you could argue that this this look is done willingly, that you want to provide that rough look where you see those scratchy lines. Here on the subdial you can't see it and overall you see some scratchiness, willingly or not. And I personally think this can be completely wrong because I'm not a watch model and I'm not a marketing specialist, but I could imagine that this look is too rough for a, let's say, real market and too clean for a handmade product. And if you take in consideration that the design looks very clean and very modern and very machine made, then you have a contrast to the, to the engravings, maybe willingly, maybe not, I don't know. But I think here you can find the potential. If Cormac can find a solution for this, I think then he really got something, yeah, very, very special here. Let's put it on the wrist. The watch is too big for me. Um, but I wrote to Cormac, I feel a bit like a rock star having this. <laughs> so, gotta be big. And here we are. I know it's too big, but guys, don't say a word, please. <laughs> because in this time, really, it got to be big and I wanted that big. Absolutely cool look, if you ask me. Okay, this was Tim's Vostok here. Dear viewer, please visit Cormac's Instagram site. It's called the formerly known as the Radio Room and now 470. Okay, welcome back. And now let's carry on with the second watch, the Kirovsky, the Poliot Kirovsky. And the story around this watch is very interesting. 1930, the first Russian watch factory in Moscow owned by the state opened doors and they tried to produce their own pocket watches, everything in-house. But in the first year they've managed only to produce 50 timepieces, very little amount. But then a Lenin fellow with the name Kirov came up and he reorganized everything. And then 1932 the factory was able to produce accordingly to plan because back then in the Soviet Union everything had a plan, right? And high officials then were so pleased about this success that they named the company or the factory after Kirov. Then, briefly before World War II, a direct order from Joseph Stalin came and Stalin, Stalin wanted military wristwatches. Military wristwatches from that factory and he gave them a schedule for the first, first piece, uh, three days, three days. They had three days to produce the prototype. And so they took pocket watches, they welted lugs on this pocket watch and there was the first military wristwatch in Russia. And now Poliot International, which is located by the way in Germany, it's a bit crazy. They are located in a small town in Franconia or, or was it Bavaria? Oh, it's all the same, right? And so they produced 200 of these watches. Oh, they, they will hate me, the Bavarians and Franconians for this, but yeah, apologies. But they produced 200 of these watches, 100 with a cream dial and 100 with a black dial. And to be honest, the one with a, with a cream dial is more beautiful, but I thought military watch, I want the real thing. And so I, I asked for the black dial here. And by the way, this is not a gift. I have to return it, but now we have, yeah, we have the opportunity to examine this thing merciless in the light box. Let's do it. So here we are with the Poliot Kiroski. The measurements are 39.5 millimeters is the case diameter. The length overall is 47, the height is 11.6. Waterproof up to three atmospheres and with a sapphire crystal. And here you see clearly the influence pocket watches. The watch case looks very big, although it is not. And you see here those special lugs, um, which, yeah, which copy a bit the look of a welted on lug on, on a pocket watch case. And here you have the typical onion crown you find also on pocket watches. And the position two here is yeah, borrowed from the original or taken from the original watch crown on 
position number two. And at first glance you think, oh, mono pusher chronograph, but it's not the case. This subdial is not really a subdial. You have there this vintage 1940 limited edition and on this side you find the seconds. That's it. Then you find Paul Yacht International and 31 jewels. This is an automatic watch as indicated here. Inside is the in-house Vostok caliber 2415.02. And I will show you this because this bond strap has a see-through yeah, hole. And yeah, it's a very interesting construction. But first let's operate the watch. You have to pull the crown, only one position. And of course, people may wonder if it's easy to manipulate now the crown, and it is. You can do it like that, and then you can set the time. Feels good, feels precise. The watch provides hand winding, but um, the seconds are not hacking. And the hand winding feels pretty good and sounds good. This really sounds like a pocket watch. And of course, you can argue um, such an old or let's say vintage inspired design with an automatic movement hmm arguable i would prefer a hand winding movement but i can understand that i mean they, they want to sell those pieces and people are more in favor of automatic watches i fully can understand this and maybe they're a bit proud of that movement because it's a good working and yeah well developed movement and so okay and what I find very attractive is the watch case or the form of the watch case. There you have a brushed side here and the, the bezel is high polished. The lugs look wonderful, absolutely special and wonderful. As you can see, high polished. Then you have those rivets here, but I will spare this out. We will discuss the, 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 the strap in a moment. And the loom is beyond crazy. The loom is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, look at this. You can read the newspaper with this, with this loom. And so overall, if you see the watch itself, very unique, very unique. And I think it's a wonderful addition for a watch collection, especially if you have more conventional pieces and you want to add something really special, then this could be it. And now let's flip it over. Here you see the movement. This is the automatic movement. It's a bit decorated, as you can see, with, with stripes, blued screws, and yeah, there, there, it, there it is. And now let's discuss the strap. And here I have to be a bit concerned, to be honest. I mean, from here everything's fine. It's quality leather, really feels good, feels substantial. The edge finishing is, is well applied, so everything's great. I really like those rivets here. As a, as a design element, this really looks really good and it really looks manufactured for that watch and not bought on, on some um, internet platforms we all know. So this really looks good. Clasp is basic, but this is completely in order, completely fine. And here you see um, Italian soft leather. But this um, is a bit concerning, to be honest, that they've cut this big hole into the strap. I'm not sure if this will last, I'm afraid to state here, because it's very, it's very weak now, those parts here. Look at this, it's very weak, not sure. And those parts here are not sealed, so moisture will enter that leather. It cannot enter here because you have this ink edge, but it can enter here. Maybe this is the paranoid leather worker in me, but I, I'm not sure. If this was my watch, I would seal this with, 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 yeah, with body lotion if you don't have anything else or with oil, but I wouldn't let it like this. And my concern is also that if when it's on the wrist, that I will show you this on the wrist. Let's put it on the wrist and let's find out how it looks like. And here you have it. So you can see. Wears big. This, I mean, those are under 40 millimeters and I have a small wrist. Yes, but it wears big. It wears big. My wrist is 17 centimeters, just for reference. Wears big, absolutely. And now you see that um, those edges here, they make a little bend because of the, of the hole. I mean, maybe it stays like this. Maybe, absolutely, absolutely possible, absolutely possible. Then it's not so much a problem. But what when those small or thin edges here, when they bend and they kind of swallow the watch? I don't know if this is possible. Just speculation. Don't take this as, as a clear warning. But I'm a bit concerned. See this? See this? A, a bit concerned. And so if this was my watch, I would at least 
um, seal a bit those edges. But the look overall is just special. It's just great and special. I mean, if you imagine this with a rougher garment, then this, uh, yeah, this really off offers something, something else. And as I said, I find the, the cream version more, yeah, pleasing, but this is more badass. This is more military here. And so I leave it there. Let's go back. Okay, welcome back. Availability here. Availability as said 100 pieces with black dial, 100 pieces with cream dial. The serial number is a bit crazy. Julian wrote me cream dial 0 to 100, black dial 100, 1 to 200. And the price is 500 euros. And this is a bit stiff, I think, a bit stiff. And so I'm very happy to announce that Julian offers a discount for Caseback Watches viewers. So if you say, no, this is a nice watch, a nice addition for the collection, and you want to purchase it, just write Caseback Watches uh, together with your order. There's in, in the form, there's a possibility to leave a comment, Caseback Watches in it, and then Ju Julian will give you 50 euros back. And so this is 58 US dollars, 60 US dollars in that in that region. And so the price then is 450. And I think, yeah, I think this is this is a reasonable price for that watch here. And so now we're at the end of this video. Cormac, thank you very much for that watch. Julian, thank you again very much for that watch. Dear viewer, thank you very much for your attention. If you want to have sneak previews, then please visit me on Instagram, casebig underscore Tim. And until next time. By the way, I wanted to show you something very interesting and very crazy. I found this in a crate and my father gave that crate to me a couple of years ago. Um, he found this in a tree. He lives near Berlin and there was a big tree in his, in his garden. And when he tried to cut that tree, it was a big one, um, he hit metal and this was it. And he brought this to the local museum there. This is a shrapnel of a Russian Flieger bomb used in the last days of World War II. And now imagine this thing with a couple of hundred meters per second hits a car or a human being. Absolutely brutal. It's sandblasted and it's treated with some substance to prevent rust. You can see rust. But I don't know what to do with it, to be honest. It's a very brutal souvenir. But yeah, I don't know. I think I will put it back in that crate.